Hi, I'm Greetable, and a couple weeks ago I released a demo for my game Penumbra Tower on Steam. It's a grid movement roguelike where you play as this little frog guy, exploring the randomized floors of the tower, fighting off enemies with unique attack patterns and abilities. As I mentioned in the previous devlog, the last set of changes in preparation for that demo didn't take as long as I thought to implement, and I felt like abruptly ending the demo on a random floor would feel not great. So why not add a boss fight to the final floor of the demo? Now if you've played the demo for Penumbra Tower, you probably know all about this boss already. And if you didn't know that the demo is out, well, what are you doing here? Open Steam and give the demo a try. The end of any game or demo is practically begging for a boss fight. And don't I know that everybody in the comments have been begging me to work on a boss fight. But to be honest with you, I was a little worried about including a boss fight. I was doubting myself that I could even create a fight that's meaningful, balanced, or even fun to fight with the time remaining before I needed to push the demo onto Steam. So let's jump right in. First things first, I need to decide what this boss is going to be. It can't be anything crazy, it needs to be simple enough that I can feasibly create and animate the sprite with the time that I have. So after mulling over this for a while, it's going to be a giant slime. And I know, I know, a slime boss is probably the most original idea you've ever heard. But listen, I needed something that can be easily drawn and animated in 5 days, and if it makes you feel any better, I would think of it just as a proof of concept boss for the demo. So now that we have an idea for what the theme of the boss fight is going to be, we need to decide on some mechanics that will make this fight interesting. So for me, I think three total mechanics would be a manageable amount for this boss. It's usually a classic that slime enemies split apart into separate enemies, either after a certain stage of the fight or after they take too much damage. I have some concerns about how this will work with the current grid system that I have. So instead, I think it would be more interesting if the boss just generated a bunch of little slimes every turn. This way, the player can make a choice between dealing damage to the boss or managing the increasing number of little slimes that are being spawned. Here's what I have so far. It's just using a stripped down version of my enemy AI script to occupy tiles and track the player's position. Uh, and this is what the slime's going to look like for a good portion of the video. I think he's looking pretty cute right now. And this was the first attempt at testing the slime spawning, just using a version of the spiderling summoning ability that I worked on a couple devlogs ago. But as I was working on this, I decided that instead I wanted something a little different, so I'm pivoting to having the boss drop explosive slime piles instead of individual enemies. And here's the first version of that, just using the regular bomb sprites. These bombs will be slightly different from the player's bombs. Instead of exploding at the end of the turn, they will explode when hit. But for now, let's move on to the second ability. Most slimes try to jump and land on the player, so we're going to do exactly that. The slime boss will jump into the air for one turn, giving the player the chance to move out of the way. Additionally, part of the reason why I changed the slime minions into explosives was that I wanted the impact of the jump to trigger the explosives when it lands. This ability was actually pretty simple to implement. I'm just moving the slime sprite up out of the camera view and moving its shadow, which is just a circle sprite, onto the player's tile, while disabling its colliders until it comes back down. Okay, with the easy abilities done, let's move on to the third one. For the last ability, I want the slime to shoot out a row of slime spikes out of the ground. And the way this is going to work is the boss will prep the ability the turn before, highlighting the tiles where the spikes will appear. These spikes will deal a flat damage amount to the player. And I did this by going through all of the tiles at the angles where I wanted the spikes, and I added those tiles to a list. I then looped through the list instantiating the spike objects on those tiles. The player takes damage when colliding with one of the spikes. So this looks a little crazy right now. The blue circles are the placeholders I've used for the spikes, but they should be destroying themselves after the ability is finished, but you get the idea. And here's how it looks when it's working correctly. So the way this fight is working is the boss is randomly selecting one of the three abilities to use each turn. There are some edge cases I've added in too, for example the slime cannot shoot out spikes or drop explosives while it's in the air. It also has to finish shooting out its spikes before it uses another ability. Okay, I think now is a good time to go over the sprites. 
Currently this is using a lot of placeholders, so I think it would be good to get some of this finalized. This is the first version I did for the slime piles. I originally was planning on the slime to be yellow, but when I made the actual boss yellow, it started to look like a Simpsons character weirdly enough, so I ended up changing it. Here's the final version of the slime pile sprite. As you can see, it's just a pile of slime with a unlit bomb embedded inside it. And this is what the sprite sheet for the slime boss looks like. I did a couple versions of its eye, that way I can animate the eye opening and closing. I also did a bunch of other polishing to the sprites inside of Unity with shaders. I mainly gave all the slime sprites a hand-drawn effect, as well as a waving effect to make them seem more jiggly. I also focused quite a bit on the jump animation, but I just did this by stretching and squishing the sprite's transform in the code. I did make a couple other tweaks, like instead of having the jumps landing deal a flat damage number, I decided to spawn in more slime spikes in an attempt to make it seem like a shockwave of slime. I also ended up making the slime explosives heal the boss, almost as if the exploded slime was getting reabsorbed back into the boss. And that's pretty much all the work I did on the demo boss. This took me five days to work on. I wasn't trying to finish the boss in five days, it just ended up taking that long. If you want to try fighting the boss, you'll need to make it to the 30th floor of the demo. And as a bonus challenge, if you're interested in trying to speedrun the demo, the fastest time I've gotten for finishing the demo is around 14 minutes. Also, the Steam Next Fest starts on February 5th, which should be today if I release this video on time. I will be doing a developer livestream today and tomorrow, where I will be playing the demo build while trying to beat my current time. And as usual, if you're interested in the game, add it to your wishlist to get notified when the game is released. I'm hoping to have it ready near the end of this year. Most of the content from this video has been from at least three weeks ago at this point, and I've been hard at work completely rewriting the room generation code to support more dynamic room shapes amongst other things. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next devlog.